Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Zan. I have another stellar episode planned for you guys today. Uh, this is going to be my final edition of the stellar series that I had planned for you guys. I'm going to be switching into some new topics next. I think we have a round table coming up very soon for you as well. But I'm here to talk about Project Rose today. DeFi on Stellar using Turing signing servers. So we've been talking about this a lot. Please watch the last few videos, catch up to date. But uh, we've also been talking about the Rose. And uh, this is Project Venus. Also, you could go back and watch this old video with me and Graf, the Zen Lounge episode with Graf. And we talk about Project Venus, uh, Tesla's new world, basically creating a new world with, um, this looks like it's more of the financial side of it. So this is Project Venus as well. Is, are they connected? We know Venus is connected to Tesla. They, there was a CIA document I'll pull it up that basically said Tesla was an alien from Venus. So uh, yeah, let's read this. Uh, the, the main thing I wanted to show you is uh, they're talking about this TSS Turing signing servers. And I got a lot of this information from my friend, David. This dude is really smart. So shout out to David. Um, I'm gonna have him on the show soon. But TSS is a network of servers called turrets. And they're basically gonna allow smart contracts and a lot more on the a stellar network. So initial goals for Project Venus. Project Venus was launched with two primary objectives in mind. First and most importantly, TSS needed to be vetted as secure and functional. Secondly, adding a short-term forward contract capabilities to Stellar's network could solve a long-term pain point for Stellar-based financial institutions. So, uh, Really getting to the big picture of this, I love this whole logo. Really getting to the big picture of what this means for us is finally, we'd like to see some of the projects anchoring regulated financial assets on stellar, on stellar work to support smart, smart contract protocols. Also Stellar's uh, blockchain is arguably the best equipped to handle traditional financial assets such as stocks, bonds, mutual front funds, Encouraging these asset anchors to work with DeFi projects to add regulated assets to smart contract protocols would make Stellar DeFi ecosystem the most useful one in the space and greatly expand upon Stellar's goal of sponsoring global economic accessibility. That's pretty big right there. It's pretty big. And Venus, we've been talking a lot about the Rose. We talked about Rose token. That's been doing pretty well for us. We got in at 10 cents, went all the way up to 14 cents the other day. And just a friendly reminder, this is entertainment only, not financial advice. Zen does not give financial advice. But yeah, so the rose is actually, the symbolism is about Venus. FBI report, Nikola Tesla, inventor of wireless technology from alien, from Tesla, from, from Venus, an alien from Venus. This is the FBI report. The space, the people have visited the Tesla engineers many times have told us that tennis, Tesla was Vene, Venezuelan, whatever the hell that is, <laughs> brought to this planet as a baby. Was Nikola Tesla an alien from Venus? I don't know about all that. I thought he was just a regular dude, but there's some connection there. They also call him like a, a light person. I think it's really to do with light. So I'm not the best with all these decodes, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> so let's look at this. So this also, this whole a decentralized Turing complete network for secure cost effective creation and signing of stellar transactions smart contract protocol for stellar uh, david shared this with me as well and it looks a lot like the king right here it kind of like looks very similar right
Where is it? So this looks like connected to the bearable guy one two three riddles to me that's when, when i first seen it you guys let me know your thoughts now let's uh let's watch this uh this is a good video if you want to learn more about product venus this is a 30 minute video uh sam connor also covers a lot of the cool topics for uh, stellar projects so if you like stellar want more information give this dude a follow he's cool and uh, yeah, because tomorrow I'm probably going to switch into some like XRP news, some different topics because I've been covering Stellar pretty hard, but uh, I think it's worth it. So let's let's watch a little bit of this clip uh, about going more in depth about Project Venus. I, I answer that one a lot, um, but it... If you had asked me a year ago, the answer would have been completely different. Uh, I think there's still a good reason for it. But originally, the reason that we were interested in doing DeFi on Stellar was because Stellar is really fast. Um, it's very cheap. Uh, and that's partially because it doesn't have native DeFi capabilities because uh, processing a smart contract through a thousand nodes on a blockchain is really expensive and very inefficient. Um, decentralized uh, ledgers and computation networks aren't really meant to do high level computation like it is required by a smart contract. So that's why uh, smart contracts on Ethereum are so expensive. Um, so because we wanted to do stuff in finance, we originally were looking at the different blockchains and we realized that there's no way you could make an effective derivatives market on Ethereum uh, in its state back then because it would have been way too expensive. Um, I mean, you can go trade an option on Robinhood for free. Why are you gonna spend 10 bucks to do it or a hundred bucks to do it on Ethereum, right? Um, right, right, right. Th those DeFi like native protocols have done a phenomenal job of scaling. Um, and so I think the, the pure cost argument isn't really there anymore because, um, I mean, Solana is probably just as fast as Stellar. But when you look at the work the Stellar ecosystem has done to accomplish its core mission of serving a global uh, ecosystem and um, underrepresented groups in the financial ecosystem, they've done a great job of making it really easy to build fintech apps on Stellar to uh, process payments and serve as bank accounts for people in developing countries. And that's really the entire goal of DeFi. Um, you want to take these financial applications that only exist in the West for the most part and allow someone in Nigeria to have an interest uh, product in on their phone in a wallet. Um, so Stellar is still far ahead when it comes to actually serving those communities and having a really well-developed um, ecosystem that can serve those com communities. So uh, if you combine that with DeFi, you can allow someone in Nigeria or someone in Latin America to have access to like lend assets that are borrowed by a hedge fund in America and then they get interest from that hedge fund. And now you have a truly global financial ecosystem um, that can truly serve anybody. And a lot of those other DeFi ecosystems, uh, their tech is great, but the actual ecosystem development and their uh, efforts to support a global ecosystem isn't aren't, aren't there currently and may not be there uh, given the focus of the um, institutions that are behind them. Mm, 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 mm. And it, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, I read so much and you're, you're probably a lot more educated on this than I am, but you read so much about, um, one of the issues It's like, they say it's like a bottleneck of capital, you know, in, in America. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I wonder, you know, when well, something like DeFi and, and connecting these, um, regulated financial structures, these hedge funds, as you mentioned, to the globe. Um, I've got to imagine that that's got to have a, a, a huge net positive, um, you know, for, I mean, even just the whole, the economy uh, of being, of, even a place like the United States, even though maybe people aren't using it directly here, but the money being able to travel uh, across the globe, you know, would have some, some great impacts. Yeah, absolutely. I can only imagine. Yeah, it's, it's, um, um, yeah, it's a crazy, there's a crazy, crazy amount of capital that's really stuck in the U.S., um, but if you can deploy that to productive um, projects in developing countries where there is a lot of need for capital and not a lot of availability, uh, all of a sudden the capital gets a lot more useful. Ah, there you go. So let's talk about uh, Project Venus. Um, 
you know, how, how did this get started? I mean, one of the things that stuck out in my head was, oh, wow, you partnered with JST Capital on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I said, wow. Um, yeah. for, for those that are listening who have no idea who JST Capital is, um, I know that they've been market makers, um, um, or at least testing out market making with, on the Stellar decks uh, for a couple years. Um, how, did that, how did that partnership, you know, come together? Yeah, so JST does a lot of market making on Stellar and Ripple, um, just on the DEXs. And we, how it happened was uh, we started getting really involved with Turing signing servers right when they were, right when Tyler announced them and said this is a project he's working on because it was exactly what we were looking for when it came to actually managing to, to do decentralized trust-free computation on Stellar. Um, so he wanted to build a proof of concept which showed how these would actually work and prove that they were a valuable concept. Um, and I think, I'm not exactly sure what happened between SDF and JST, but my general understanding is JST came to them with an idea for uh, short-term forward contracts as something that would be valuable in the space based on their experience market making. Um, and Tyler started looking at organizations which were, would be capable of building this proof of concept and have the technical capabilities and expertise to uh, actually make it work. Um, and since we were doing De or trying to do DeFi with all the Turing signing service stuff, and uh, we're really involved in building the protocol and making it actually run, um, he, he landed on us and asked if we'd be interested in helping build the proof of concept. So we spent a lot long time with JST and SDF ironing out the idea and figuring out what the pro protocol actually had to do and the issues it was trying to solve. Um, and yeah, I guess it just kind of went from there. That's, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's, uh, it's insane. So yeah, you see the Ripple Stellar connection. So they're actually friends. They're not really. They don't really hate each other. This is the last thing that I have to share with you. Somebody asked me this question earlier today about. Um, uh, I'll answer it right now. That if you also watch this full video, it's packed with good uh, information. So uh, Sam Connor, he's a good dude that covers Stellar, and then. Uh, this is the video about Project Venus. So check out the whole video. This is the, the, the last thing I'm gonna cover, the anatomy of an asset. Each stellar asset has two characteristics, the asset code and the issuer. When you look up or interact, or interact with, the, with the stellar uh, asset, you always use both to identify it. So many stellar tokens represent credits that can be redeemed for something outside the network. Often fiat currency, but also bonds, gold. And since uh, more than one organization can issue credit representing the same underlying asset, asset codes often overlap. More than one company offers a USD token on Stellar, for instance. So basically, uh, there's gonna be these different credits. So let's say you have a token, it's easier and safer to hold on your phone, but then you actually could go to a physical place where you could redeem that token for fiat dollars or gold or whatever. So I don't know the whole process. Someone asked like, will you actually be able to exchange these stellar credits for the physical actual real thing? Uh, we have to look more into the process, but this document right here says that. So their credits can be, that can be redeemed for something outside the network. So that's pretty cool. So you could have a credit, you hold the gold in your phone, and then it's really some decentralized vault somewhere is holding it. And, it's, and you could actually see it on the blockchain and know that it's safe and secure there. And you don't have to worry about someone coming to your house and robbing you. Like here in America, we don't have to worry about that that much. But let's say you're in like a third world country and you, you're known for being the person with all the gold. You get some pirates coming after you. They're going to raid your house, steal your gold. So this is probably a lot more safer. It ends a lot of conflict. Also, it's like, let's say like a lot of times people have issues running businesses because people in bad areas, they'll get robbed all the time. 
like let's say some people come and point a gun to your head telling you to open up your safe for the cash in the in the drawer wouldn't it be a lot more difficult to rob someone well i guess you could get them to force you to send you a transaction if you want it but i just think there's a lot more it's a lot safer and and it helps uh balance out a lot more conflicts this uh this system right here so yeah that's it for my video tonight guys uh have an awesome day and uh peace i definitely like the term fiat token a lot better than stable coin because <laughs> there's a lot of different currencies in the world and maybe they're not also stable i like that um, but uh yeah so i, th I think uh, definitely the future will be this world where people are using digital uh, representations of value, whether it's fiat currencies or gold or shares or bonds, anything. It'll, it should all be kind of tokenized. And what this allows you to do is it gives you all kind of the power and benefits that cryptocurrency has where you can send it quickly and easily to other people uh, and everything is interoperable. So it's just a much better state of affairs than what we have today.